Hey, welcome back Fish Hunt Northwest. We're here in the Bait Lab. I want to remind everybody, all Bait Lab presentations are brought to you by Max Lure. Check out everything they have going at maxlure.com. So as I mentioned prior to the break, uh, looking at a couple alternatives for Puget Sound Coho indoor, even the ocean. Just some stuff I have been using the last couple seasons and basically just comes down to taking silver hoard components pairing them up with max lure components and making lures that look like kokanee gear on steroids. I mean, they're salmon, right? Kokanee or salmon. We're talking coho, chinook, what have you. They're all salmon, bigger scale, bigger lines, bigger hooks, bigger hoochie bodies, bigger profile, lots of flash, lots of glamour, <laughs> and it's getting it done. So what are we talking about? Well, looking at our kokanee rigs, you know what? It all starts there. We got the .08 smile blades uh, from Max Lure, coupled out with some beads, glow beads, and of course our LP, these mini LP silver horde little hoochies that you can find. A little LP squid is actually what it is. I've been tying those up for years and they work really, really well. As we moved into resident coho, I started taking some of our smaller uh, two, two and a half inch uh, hoochies. I took some of the herring aid, as you heard me talking with Mike Ainsworth earlier, some of the herring aid patterns in the Ace High Fly. Um, the Ace High Fly that I would cut back to a couple inches to mimic the size of bait that was in the water at the time with those two, two and a half inch uh, herring that were out in Puget Sound. So trim those back and or use the Ace High Fly Juniors. Here's a herring aid pattern, Ace High Fly Junior, you know, coupled out with a with a glow smile blade, the glow and or the pink Ace High Fly Junior. All of this worked extremely well for the resident coho, putting the smile blades on in front of these smaller presentations, a, uh, a double, you know, two odd hooks in a, in a mooching rig kind of a, a pattern. It, it worked, it flat out worked fantastic. So it got me to thinking, why not take what we're doing here and increase in size? And that's basically all this is. I got a full size uh, Ace High Fly herring aid pattern, a couple glow beads and a 1.0 size smile blade. This is the purple haze paired up with the herring aid out in the ocean. This absolutely just killed it. That either uh, with, the, with the purple haze and our glow patterns, our, um, our 1.0 smile blades in the, in the chrome scale. A lot of these patterns, you know, it's just mixing and matching, okay? And they all worked and I tied up a bunch of them and we have various colors. Here's your chrome scale with blue, the blue flat out produced uh, in the ocean blue and silver is a great color for coho. The pinks work, the, um, the herring aid patterns, these ones are pretty much destroyed. They got so stripped of all their, uh, their the shiny material coming off of them. It's, they, they just work, they, they flat out worked. I'm gonna be running them tomorrow. I've tied up a number of them. I also have some of our uh, hoochies in various colors. Some of them are similar, same color patterns with the 1.0 smile blades on top of them. Very easy to make up. Um, as you tie these together. It's not too tough, gonna tie one for you right now. Basically, I like to run these. I've been running two lengths of, of leader on these presentations behind a 360 chrome flasher for the most part with my uh, home, home uh, uh, knockoff breakaway that's working fantastic. So the chrome 360, a lot of the parole troll flasher has been getting it done. And I start off with 45 inches a leader. And believe it or not, much like kokanee fishing, you guys have heard me talk about kokanee before. It's not about the strength of leader that you need for durability and stuff. It's all about transitioning action into the lure behind the flasher. And even with dodgers and kokanee, we upscale our leader. I run 15 pound fluorocarbon because it's so stiff. It's like a wire and it puts a lot of action back there on that lure, no matter what distance it is behind your dodger. Same holds true on these uh, lures I'm tying up for coho. Now I could use and probably get away all day long with 25 pound tests. For the most part, I'm tying these on 40 pound. Why? Yeah, for one reason, you may encounter a Chinook from time to time. That's a given. So we are out there in the open waters and there are Chinook around. So I'm gonna tie these on 40. Are they leader shy? Heck no. Is the durability of your presentation gonna be there? Absolutely. Will it impart more action to the lure? More than likely because the leader is stiffer and it's, uh, it's transmitting that action off of that 360 right back into that lure and whipping it around. So leader lengths, 
the two lengths that I've been finding great success and playing back and forth with here, and they were actually mentioned earlier as we were talking to Chris Vertopoulos, uh, a lot of these I ran at 22 to 24 inches out in the salt water, um, out in the ocean, and all upwards of 36. Did that both in river on buoy 10 and also uh, in the ocean. So 24, 22, 24, and or upwards of uh, 32, I'd say 32, 34. So I start with 45 inches a liter because I'm gonna tie a dual hook on here. So these are, I'm tying these on uh, dual three-aught hooks. You can run a four-aught in the front, which is tucked up under the skirt, uh, and a three-aught uh, trailing in the back. But I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this with two three-aught hooks, okay? So we're gonna put about uh, 10 or 11 wraps here is basically what I do. I'm gonna run this on through, okay? This is just a simple, you know, egg loop knot. It's a low profile knot, it's very strong. We're not gonna rely on the egg loop by any means. Don't need it, <clears throat> but it's such an easy knot to tie. It's durable, it uh, rides on that hook very well. It lays flat. Uh, I just like the way it, 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 you know, aligns itself on your hook. So there's our bottom hook in, in short order. Now, we're going to slide this other hook on. Uh, I'll get into this bait spinner here in a little bit, and you're going to see the difference here on that particular rig. I like to actually tie that top hook to be a sliding hook because if you're fishing baits of various sizes, you have that adjustability built into your lure, which is kind of nice, okay? We're not talking about tying a spinner on a hard spinner shaft. These are spinners that are tied actually on a leader. One thing I like to do is create space and distancing. I want my trailer hook to be below any of the skirting, any of the part of the lure to ensure that I got that, that unex, you know, that exposed hook trailing at the back end there, which uh, it tends to lead towards a lot of uh, solid hookups and high land ratio. So I always go two finger widths between my two hooks. And then I just simply take that. We're gonna tie this one in place. Now, this is 40 pound test. And with typical coho, I don't have to worry about, you know, worry about these hooks breaking if they get hooked on that bottom hook only. Typically, you're not breaking them off because the, well, the leader's so doggone strong uh, at, that, at that line weight. Okay, there's my spacing, okay? Again, two finger widths. That allows for this bottom hook to be out from underneath the lure, fully exposed, and again, your hookup to land ratio will go up exponentially, much like kokanee fish and much like those resonant coho, uh, even on our bigger fish, I like to have that hook exposed. Now I'm gonna take a couple of these, and I get them from Silver Horde. Uh, I got them here somewhere. Oh, I can't find my package. Oh, here they are. The uh, These are the glow beads, the large uh, plastic glow beads. Like to use these as inserts inside my hoochies and my ace high flies. They allow for spacing. They help bring your lure that you're sliding down your line up above your hooks, which also tends to lead towards that bottom hook exposing. For this particular rig up, I'm gonna slide two of these glow beads on here. And really, to be honest, when we're using these ace high flies, this does add additional glow to your presentation simply by those sitting on the inside of this particular lure. So this is a uh, hearing aid pattern, ace high fly, and we just simply are gonna get to the center of this. These ace high flies, these hearing aids, they have the center uh, um, portion of it as well. Some of them are wide open. This one has that center weave of pattern in there. So slide that right on down. Now you look, that hook at the base of this thing is exposed right at the bottom end of that skirt. Again, two finger widths, and all day long, you're gonna be right at the bottom of that thing. So now I could tie a swivel on this, and we could run this behind a 360 flasher all day long, it's gonna get it done. I like to impart a little more action, a little more flash, a little more color, a little more vibration, anything that's gonna draw those coho's attention over towards what we got going on, hopefully separated out from what else they're seeing out there, something different. So you gotta have the ball bearings underneath your smile blade. Uh, for these bigger lures, I like to go with two, and you can use, you know, a glow bead, a white glow bead, these green or chartreuse uh, beads also glow. It's all UV, it's acting, a adding extra color and attractant. Put two of them on there to ensure that this blade is always spinning. Simply tie that on there. And by the time we get this done, we started with a 45 inch piece of mono. You do the multi wraps on your two hooks. Now you're gonna tie the swivel on here. And when this all gets done, 
This lands right at about 32 inches, which is a great length to run behind that 360 flasher, okay? So we we'll put that on there, and I like to pre-tie barrel swivels on all my presentations because those 360s have that, have that swivel on the bottom, that snap, and that way you are, put that on there. Don't use your teeth, kids. Uh, use your pliers. That's what they're here for. So tighten that up. Okay, and there you go. That is your Ace High Fly. Basically on a mooching rig, double hook. Uh, again, three odd hooks, spacing, which allows for that hook exposed. Ace High Fly, couple of beads on there. That uh, smile blade will spin all day long. It's again, extra flash, extra tractability. It, there's no downside to it. I can't think of a reason why not you know, run these. And if you haven't tried them, give it a try. The one point zero smile blade okay there's your hoochie or your ace high fly setup that you simply clip behind your uh, 360 something else i've been running i made up these bait spinners which proved uh their worth okay um i've been running a lot of the the uh, rice davis uh anchovy helmets okay tommy turned me on to these uh you know i i like running whole bait i like the fact that you know, anchovy at times can be a little more not so durable as say a red label, body size wise, you'll find that those baits are similar in overall size. You can stuff a red label, a green label, you can stuff an anchovy into these helmets. They work fantastic. They add extra glow, they add extra attractability, and they add absolutely durability and great action on your bait, okay? Again, no downside to it. So to build these, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, this I did tie on a 4 aught and a 3 aught. The 4 aught is at the top end where the bait is. This is rigged on a sliding mooching rig. That's why I have a bead in there because when you do hook fish and if they um, are on predominantly on this upper hook and pull pressure on it, it does slide down. I don't like these hooks coming into contact with each other. To me, that's a potential failure point. So I will put a bead in between there that if that hook does get drawn back, and I've seen a number of times, um, that is going to be a bit of a bumper in between those two uh, uh, eyes on those hooks to hopefully not break that leader. So tie that on, it's a sliding rig, and I can show you guys at some point how to tie that slider. It's a little time consuming, but pretty easy to do once you get it down. Then you slide on your anchovy helmet. And once that's in place, it's just a matter of stacking a number of beads and your spinner blade of choice. This is a uh, 3.5 uh, spinner blade. You can build these with uh, smile blades as well. I've built them with smile blades. They work fantastic. The 3.5s with all the color, all the different colors and all the different UVs, tractability. The nice thing about this particular presentation is when you have a bait in there that is spinning and you have a spinner blade of various colors with UVs and flash that is spinning, it's like, you know, a double presentation. And I've had, especially those coho, because they're so aggressive, they'll come up, they'll rip part of that bait off of there, striking it once or twice and not getting hooked up. And I just leave the rod, feed them a little bit of line. And because that spinner blade is still active, creating vibration, color, and, you know, quite frankly, probably making them mad, they come back after it like crazy uh, versus I've side by side fishing just bait in a helmet and once they strip it or hit it once or twice don't get hooked up they don't come back to that rod so i you know tried to gauge that to see if the effectiveness of it to have a spinner still in that vicinity after they've struck after that bait if they come back and grab it and more times than not because that spinner is going they absolutely come back and get it so to simply rig these uh, for me, I like to make sure I get behind what would be the dorsal fin on your bait. That's the anchor point because once I pull that on through, it's, uh, it's got a good amount of meat that it's getting into on that bait, okay? Then we're going to stuff the head of this thing in here. Now, you do need toothpicks to make this thing work, okay? Pop out your pin. You want to snug that right down into there, stick that head right up in the helmet there, Put that pin back in. That's going to hold the head of that bait right inside that helmet. Now, to draw a little bend on this thing, you simply have to pull on the line, okay? And that's why we want to anchor that top hook into a good amount of the meat above the backbone behind the dorsal. That's going to put the appropriate bend into your bait. That's not going to want to stay there unless you take 
a toothpick, you put it into this main uh, channel here of where the main line comes through initially, and then you just break that off. Now, with that friction of that toothpick in there, okay, I can pull this just a little bit, and I get just an ever so slight bend. That's all you need. You don't need much more than that from the top down. You can see. The other thing I like about this, with that spacing, if I'm fishing bigger bait or smaller bait, because this hook slides, I can adjust where this actually anchors in behind my helmet, which allows this trailer hook to be right at the tail every single time. Doesn't matter the size of the bait, okay? That's why for these bait rigs, I'll always tie a slider. It allows me to have that adjustability, and I don't have to tie various size leaders and hook spacing depending on what size bait I'm fishing. Same 40 pound leader, same four out, three out combination, sliding hook, it works for all sizes of bait. Then you simply have the beads out in front which create enough spacing that this blade spinning around breaking the water doesn't interfere with the helmet's angled cut ability to capture water and put the bait in a rotation. If you're to put this spinner blade one or two beads in front of that uh, helmet, you're going to find that it interferes with this surface capturing enough water or friction to allow the bait to be in rotation. So you have to kind of experiment with it a little bit. I find that anywhere between five and six, uh, six millimeter beads gets it far enough up the line. It doesn't interfere with the, doesn't interfere with the bait's ability to rotate. So now you have a dual rotation, uh, dual attractability. You're fishing bait with a spinner out in front of it. You've heard of spinner baits. This is a bait spinner. Uh, again, you can build this same exact thing with the Max Lure Smile Blades. They work all day long as well. Again, color, UV, flash, attractability, vibration, it's all there. Coho go crazy for all that stuff. And you can absolutely set these up as well. Mike Ainsworth mentioned it earlier, Potsky's Fire Gel, either the, uh, the herring on the helmet. Don't put the Fire Gel on to the, the backside of these Ace Highs. It'll mat them all together. They don't have the pulsation uh, action that you want. So simply put a little bit of scent on here. Obviously with this, we don't need it, um, but you can put it on there. You can put a little bit on that smile blade if you so desire. For me, if you fish in my boat, you'll see that I lather up my flashers with a good amount of scent. That fire gel stays on these flashers all day long. I'll run herring on one, uh, anchovy anise, and po probably some tuna on them. They all work, they stay on, works fantastic. Got to have that scent out there sometimes to draw them in. All right, that's going to do it for us here in the Bait Lab. Any questions or comments on any of this stuff, hit us up. Messenger on Facebook, hit us uh, with some comments or questions over there on YouTube. Uh, happy to always answer your questions in regard to our Bait Lab presentations. And uh, with that, we're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back, we'll close out the show with Dave Calhoun, a.k.a. Larry the Cable Guy, right here at Fish on Northwest.